What's up everybody? Thanks for joining me again this week. You'll probably notice it's a lot brighter around here. I guess summer is coming even though it's still really cold in Cleveland. Today I'm going to be talking about recovery models, like high level overview, what they are, how they work, and how they impact performance. I'm also going to mention a fourth type of recovery model. It's unofficial, you'll see what I mean, but it kind of makes sense to include in this video. So recovery models just pretty much define how SQL Server writes the transaction log. This is really important when talking about backup in recovery as well as you know how those different recovery models cause different performance scenarios on your server first recovery model I want to talk about is full recovery full recovery basically everything is written to the transaction log if you want to basically restore data without any data loss only way you're gonna get this done is with full recovery on your database but just because you have full recovery on doesn't mean you won't lose any data, right? I mean, you still have to back up your data, back up your logs, your transaction log, any differential full backups, make sure they're not corrupt, um, right? So just having full recovery mode on doesn't mean your data will never get lost. But what it does mean is that you potentially won't lose any data because every single transaction is written to the transaction log. So if your server blows up and you need to restore it, you know, on a, on a backup server, you should, if you have all those backups and they're not corrupt and your transaction log hasn't been corrupted either, uh, you should be able to recreate any of the transactions. Now, since full recovery is logging every single transaction on the database, means there's a performance hit. On something like an OLTP system where you don't want to lose any user data, um, right? full recovery might be the only option you have and so that performance hit is just something you need to deal with. But not all of the different recovery models write everything to the transaction log. So on the opposite end of the full recovery model is the simple recovery model. Now a lot of people believe that if the full recovery model is writing everything to the transaction log, the simple recovery model must not be writing anything to the transaction log. That's not true. All that simple recovery means is that transaction log is emptied out uh, as soon as that data is no longer needed by SQL Server. It basically makes transaction log maintenance a lot easier since transaction log space can get reused. Also, in simple recovery, transactions are minimally logged if possible, so things like bulk inserts and the like, um, so that even less data is written to that transaction log. Basically, you want to use simple recovery where you don't care about losing some data. The reason is because if your server crashes or whatever, you basically can only restore your data as of whatever your last backup was, right? Anything that was in that transaction log, since it constantly is getting cleared out by SQL Server, it's lost forever. This makes simple recovery, you know, good for things like ETLs and staging processes where data is easy enough to recreate if you lose it. Out of the three recovery models, the simple model is by far the highest performing one because it is writing as little as possible to the transaction log. The third recovery model is the bulk log recovery model. It basically sits in between the full and the simple recovery models where it will fully log most transactions so you can restore to a point in time for most things except for if you're doing bulk operations, like if you're doing a select into or, or a bulk insert or anything like that, it'll actually minimally log those transactions uh, for better performance. That means on those bulk log transactions, you won't be able to recover uh, if data loss occurs, but for all of the transactions that occur under the fully logged method, um, you should be able to recover. So those are the three traditional official recovery models in SQL Server. Um, that most of us are used to using, but I did mention that there was one more recovery model that, you know, is unofficial, but it's worth mentioning. And what I'm referring to as that unofficial recovery model is if you're using the in-memory features in SQL Server and you choose schema-only durability. I talked about that in last week's video a little bit, um, where if you choose schema-only durability, your data only exists in memory on the server, it does not write to the transaction log. And while it's not an official recovery model, I mention it because it does interact with the transaction log in a different way. And what that means from a recovery standpoint, right, is that if you use it and something happens, your data is just gone. However, it also means that if you want ultimate performance, you can use that because SQL Server isn't gonna have any overhead of having to write to the transaction log. It's gonna be faster than your full or your bulk logged or your simple recovery models. So thanks for watching this week. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks.